you know, I've never had, I've never had the courage to try to sing that in a round. It just seems too tough. You, you know, I mean, some of the other stuff we can sing it around. So maybe if we do this again, I'll, I'll take a step and have the courage with you all to sing it around, but not today. We, if we did it together, we're good. All right. <laughs> Plastic donuts. You might, you might have noticed that's our theme, huh? We got the big donuts everywhere. All right, we, we got the big donuts. We're giving away a book. It's called Plastic Donuts. Uh, the the uh, ushers will have it as you leave today if you haven't gotten one yet. Uh, we got them on tables all over. We'd really like you to take one. Uh, the, this series is, is based on this book. Uh, today we're going to talk about what's an introduction and, and in the first chapter. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and so we'd love for you to have a book and, and, and read along with us. If you've got questions, I'll tell you what, you can email Pastor Nathan. He'll answer them all. Okay? <laughs> all right, plastic donuts. But today this is our theme, uh, giving good gifts. Uh, giving good gifts in this relationship, this love, this reality that we live with. With, with God. That's our focus. Um, there's a Christian writer, and, and this really is what we're going to talk about in a nutshell. Go ahead, put that up for me. A.W. A. Tozier. Anybody here, A.W. Tozier? Yeah, he's a pretty good writer. Uh, I always feel funny about that. He's a great writer, guys. Yeah, I shouldn't call somebody that, that is so good, uh, pretty good. All right. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about them. Would you read that with me? One, two, three. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about him. Does that make sense to you or not? How we think about God informs how we're going to live our lives. How we think about God informs how we think about ourselves. How we think about our neighbor. How we think about our husband or wife or children. How we think about God is a pattern for how we're going to live our lives. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about giving good gifts, and this is the foundation of it. Put that up for me. G giving good gifts. Uh, you know, we know this is true. We know that giving good gifts is powerful in our life. I, I wrote this series up, and I, I used uh, an example. Uh, Jane and I were... We finally got to Hawaii. We'd already gone. To, we already always had wanted to go to Hawaii, and and we went to Maui, and we went up the Hana Hana coast. Is that right? And had a great time one day. But then uh, the next day, she got sick. She uh, she had battled cancer for years and years, and so she was immunodepressed. Uh, and so she got this this exotic bug, uh, and she got really sick. And I, I rushed her to the hospital, and and they said to us, "Well, um, it's 50-50. If we find uh, the the uh, the uh, if we find the stuff that can kill this bug, if we can identify it, we may allow it, it may allow her to live. Otherwise, she's going to die. Uh, and, and so, um, it, it, we we were there a week in this hospital, and the whole week they kept saying she might be looking good, but we still haven't identified it. It, it was kind of a crazy time, yeah. And I I got out of the the, the nice little hotel and I went, got into this dump. So I could walk to the hospital, you know, and kind of, I thought, oh, this is what Hawaii is, you know, this it was kind of fun. And, and uh, so I'd, I'd walk to the hospital every day, um, and, and the second day, I walked by this mall, um, and I went in, and I bought this, what for us, was a really expensive necklace. And, and I don't know why I did that, I just wanted to give her something, Right? And so I, I walked into the room, and I gave her the necklace, and she didn't say to me, it was very interesting, she didn't say, well, why'd you do this? We can't, afford, no, she just, and she told me later what it had meant to her. What it had meant to her, she said, she thought, well, if he's given me an expensive necklace, he must think I'm going to live. You see what gifts do? They're powerful. I asked the staff for stories about great gifts in their life. Uh, Melissa talked to me about her mom, who's been battling cancer for a number of years. When she first got cancer, the the, the, the children and the grandchildren, uh, to this day, are, were thousands of miles away, 2,000 miles away from where she's at. And, and so Melissa bought the, went to a store and bought the most softest, cuddliest blanket you could get. And she traced the hands of her children, of, of the grandchildren, and had her sister-in-law said the traced hands of her children to her. Uh, uh, then a, a good friend who's very talented, she, she, she put those on cloth and she sewed them into the blanket and then she stitched their names and, and their birthdays 
uh, and, 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 and on that blanket was something like, these, these hands are always holding grandma in their love. That was the gift. You think that was a good gift? Huh? What do you think? Uh, she takes it everywhere she goes. And she lays her hand on top of the children's, the grandchildren's hands as she prays for them. And she remembers that they're praying for her. Gifts are powerful, aren't they? And I talk about Christmas with the kids. Uh, can you think of a Christmas gift that you received or that you gave? Because honestly, as you, as you get older, it's all about what you give, isn't it? Is it? I mean, it's not, it doesn't, do you agree? I mean, it's, it's about what you can give to somebody, right? Uh, can you remember a gift in your life? Maybe that you received that meant a whole lot because it wasn't just a thing. It was about, it was about the heart, huh? Or, or maybe something that you gave. Giving good gifts is powerful. Put that up for me. And the heart of the matter is this. It's not about the stuff. It's always about relationship. It's always about relationship. We're going to talk today about in this relationship that we have with God as our Heavenly Father, the power of giving and receiving good gifts. But if we don't know God, if we don't know how to look at him, we're going to be all fouled up. It's like that A.W. Tozier quote. We got to know who God is and what it means. And what it means to give good gifts and receive the great gift of Jesus in this relationship that we have with God. You know, I write these paragraphs to myself uh, as I'm putting a message together. And every once in a while I think, oh, maybe I'll share that one. So I, I, I want to share this one with you. Go ahead. It, it, we, now, remember, I just wrote this to myself, so I, this is not, not very polished. We can relax here. There's no pressure here. There is no ask in this series. Everybody say that. One, two, three. There is no ask in this series. Not in the beginning, not in the middle, not in the end. There is no ask. It's simply a series to grow us in this relationship we have with God and the power of giving good gifts to him. And remember, this was to myself. It's not like with the doorbell rings. Do you know what I mean by that? I, I live alone, right? So most of the time when the doorbell rings, it's going to be a salesperson. I mean, I hear the doorbell ring, and they're going to sell me windows or siding or, or something, right? Or they're going to want to do my yard. Or they, you know, they, they want to sell me. And boy, before I hit that door, my brain is saying no. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting ready to say no. Huh? It's not like that. There's no ask in this series. It's about building this relationship and what it means to live in this relationship of giving good gifts to God as we receive Jesus from him. It's not like when the doorbell rings. It's about grace. This undeserved love that Jesus pours out on us that we know in him. Go ahead, put that up for me. This is where our relationship with God starts and it never leaves this place. The, in the beginning of John, it says, no one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus. He has made him known. I think this is so powerful. Do you want to know who God is? You have to look here. When we quit looking here, we miss who he is in our life. Our God is the one who gave us Jesus. I have two sons. And, you know, I remember old pastors saying this when I was growing up, and I thought, well, I don't know, that's not very powerful. But, you know, when I think about it, I'm sorry, but I'm not giving one of my sons for you guys. I'm not doing it. But that's what God did. And if we think we can love each other, how much more did he love his only begotten son? This is where relationship starts. To know the heart of the Father in the love of Jesus Christ. And to know that this love didn't die, but that this love beat death itself. So that we're never alone. So that he lives with us every day and we'll live with him forever. You see, 
and I say this over and over again, but I, I, I'm always struck. To me, it's always fresh, so I'm sorry if I bore you with it. But what sin does is, is, it, is it cuts us off. It, it puts us in this place of isolation. We weren't made to live that way. That's why we're empty. Uh, that, that, that's why we're always striving and never finding. We were created to be happy and whole in this relationship with God. And, and what Jesus does is connect us again to the Father. Why? How? Because we see his heart. And he offers us this gift and we receive it by faith. This is where we know God and we never leave this place. We're going to talk about giving good gifts, but we never leave this place. The moment we've left this place, the moment we think we need more than this place, we have less. We're always here. Always knowing the heart of the Father. As we live in his grace. Okay. Plastic donuts. <laughs> uh, we're giving away this book. Uh, this, this week I, I would challenge you to read the first chapter, the introduction and first chapter three times. The first time, just three of the time. You should see mine. It's got, it's got circles. It's got underlines. It, my, my wife used to laugh at me when she saw a book that I would read two or three or four times, right? Because it, it's really cool. You miss stuff or you see new things or you say, oh, I want to see what it is with it, does with this. It's really a neat little book. And the neat thing for me is the guy's not a pastor. And he's not a theologian. He's just like a normal guy that's always struggled with this idea of money in his life in relationship to God. Uh, and, and he struggled with it because, because he grew up in an environment, it seems to me, where it was, uh, it was always about God banging him on the head, or he felt like it was. And he found a whole new way of looking at God. Remember the Tozier quote? He found a whole new way of looking at God in his book, the Bible. And it changed everything. It, it's a neat book because he takes you on this journey with him. Um, and he's just a normal guy. But one that God touched with this insight that he wanted to share. Plastic Donuts, it's, it's a pretty good book. Uh, so, so what's Plastic Donut all about? I mean, we got them everywhere, right? We, we, we've got all the books out there. So what's this, this Plastic Donut story? And that's what it is. It's, it's a story. It's, it's, it's a story of, of a good gift. Huh? Well, he was working one day. He had his uh, laptop open. And he had an uh, 18-month-old girl. Now, see, I had a daughter. I have a daughter, but she's an old lady now. But, so, but at one time, <laughs> and I hope she doesn't hear that on tape. Oh, well. Uh, but... but uh, <laughs> But uh, anyway, at one time, she was 18 months old, and, and I can remember that, you know, and I can remember her. So she was 18, this little girl was 18 months old, and, I, and this really, I, I don't know why he said this, and I hope, I hope some of you get this, but she said, he, she comes bounding over to him with her Shirley Temple curls. How many get that? It's, it's in the book. It was this old, old, old film series, and they had this cute girl in it with these curls. That, but I remember a little girl like this, you know, and, and she's got this smile on her face, and the curls are bouncing, and she runs over to her daddy, and he's kind of busy like this, but she stands so that he sees her. So she's right here, so he can't miss her, and he looks up, and, and um, she hands him a plastic donut uh, from her, pla her kitchen set. Has a child ever done that to you? It's a big deal, huh? Because, I mean, this is important to them. Here at church, sometimes uh, a, a little child will hand me, like, a piece of food, a cookie, or a cake. And I always ask him, you sure you want me to have this? You know, because that, you know, I, I, I didn't like the plastic stuff. I want the food, you know, even as a kid. So, so I know this is important. But, but this plastic donut was big time. And she was giving it to her daddy. So what would you have done, dads? Brushed her off? No, he went. He took the donut, and he, and he like he was taking a bite, and he goes, oh, mm, oh, this is wonderful. This is so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Would that be what you would do? What do you think she did? She went and got something else, right? And this went back and forth and back and forth. And he writes about what this did to her and did to him. Here, this is what he writes. Go ahead, put the next one up. This is what he writes. Then something beautiful happened. I can't read that. 
Uh, her big brown eyes widened, and her lips pushed, can you see this? And her li lips uh, pushed a giant smile against her puffy cheeks. She stood up on her toes, shrugged her shoulders up to her ears, and let out a high-pitched squeal. Let's do that. Shrug your shoulders and go, ee -hee -hee. ready? One, two, three. Ee -hee -hee. Wouldn't that be awesome to see your little girl doing that? She was so happy that she had given something to her dad that meant so much, right? But then he continues writing. He says this. She was learning about the power of a pleasing gift and learning about connecting with me as her father. Meanwhile, I was learning about God and how better to connect with him as my father. You ever thought of that? He continues, for years, I had thought a lot about the receivers of my gift, my church, my neighbor, my chosen charity. This guy's a thinker, right? He writes a book, he's a thinker. And I had studied the benefits that come to me as a giver, but I hadn't given much thought to my gift from God's point of view. Could it be that God desires a similar placid zone of experience when I give to him? I mean, think about it. God owns all the donuts. Kind of like father here, right? He bought the stinking set. He bought the kitchen set. He owned all the donuts. But he was delighted, huh? God gives us everything. The Bible says, what do you have that you haven't been given? Do you think God reacts like that? And if we haven't been thinking about him that way, then maybe that's why... We're having such a hard time lately. Go ahead, Kevin. And what about the thrill my daughter received when she saw the joy on my face? I never before pictured the act of giving as something that elicits such delightful reactions. Because he had been living under what he had to do or, or direction as opposed to relationship. Had I been missing opportunities to connect with God, in deeper ways. Wouldn't you like to live under God in that way? <laughs> to, to know him, him as father as this little girl knew her father. And to know that he takes such delight in you. What comes to our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. J.W. Tozer. But the question becomes, is it true? Great story. Great application. But is that how God reveals himself? It's a good question, huh? The Bible tells us that one day the disciples came up to Jesus and they said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And what I think they were saying is we see this relationship you have with the Father. We want that. We want that closeness. Teach us how to get that. And Jesus taught them, this is what he said. When you pray, say, our Father. And this wasn't the Father. This was the Abba. When I was in Israel, it was, we went to this um, old fort. Uh, and, and there was a, a Jewish family there. And the little children were running around calling after their father. You know, they, 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 were, they were saying, Abba, Abba. Abba, Abba, Abba. It, was, it sounded so neat, right? Because obviously this was the endearing term. It was like daddy, daddy, daddy. That's the word Jesus uses. That's the relationship that he reveals. A well-known Christian says that God would, by these words, teach us that we are his true children and that he is our true father so that we may with all boldness and confidence ask him as dear children ask their dear father. That guy got it. That guy got what God was trying to teach us here. That he is our daddy. That this relationship is just like this little girl with the bouncing curls and her daddy. Is that tough for you? Is it hard? How have you been thinking about God? Especially in this aspect of giving gifts to him. How have you been picturing him? How have you been picturing you in that scenario? See, we have to retrain our minds sometimes in how we see things because the text shows us something else. How do we get connected with God, they were saying, like, just like you, Jesus. Well, you call him Daddy. And you know you live under him as Daddy. Isn't that amazing? That's exactly what he's saying here. How far are you from that? 
especially when it comes to giving good gifts. Okay, just one text. Is that all you can grab, Pastor? No, I got a couple more. Here we go. Remember the text about Jesus and the children? They were bringing little children to him to touch them. And actually, they were probably even smaller than this, if you look at the Greek there. Little children to, to, to touch them and bless them. And the disciples tried to keep them from coming to Jesus. And Jesus got ticked off. It's one of my favorite passages because I love it. Because I, I love kids. And I'm thinking, well, if Jesus gets ticked off for the kids, then I'm going to get kicked off for the kids. You know, really, I mean, that, that's what it's saying here. But then he says this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, read the rest of it with me, like a little child will never enter it. Ooh. How does God want you to know him? As a little child. As one who delights in the heart of the Father. As one who loves to bring good gifts to him. <laughs> to know him as the Father who gives all things. So that we can live not from a place of scarcity. But a place of of plenty. Like a little child. I don't care. I don't care if you're a big, strong guy, much taller and bigger than me, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't care if you're a great, big football player, a senior in high school, like, and saying, I can conquer the world. I don't care if you're the most accomplished student on the face of the earth. You're going to Davis and you're going to be a doctor. Or you're going to be an engineer. I don't care what it is. I don't care what great things you can do. I don't care what awesome, wonderful stuff you've done. Nor do I care what brokenness you're living in. Nor do I care of how you think there's no way this can be you because you can't possibly measure up. God says, this is the way to see me. As a little child. And I'm your daddy. This is the relationship you live in. First John says, how great is the love the Father. Interesting, huh? The Father has lavished on us that we should be called, read the next three words, children of God. And that is what we are. I don't make this stuff up, guys. Yeah, it, it's all there. In Ephesians, I, I love this text. It starts like this. And, and this is just extra. So I didn't want to put it all up there. But for this reason, I kneel before the, read the word. Father. So everything for everything is flowing from that relationship with the Father. You see that? Everything. And and he prays that I pray that you may have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. How can we do that? Because we know God is our Father. How'd that happen? Because of Jesus. We live in this relationship, see? And that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God in all that you do. Where does that all start from? God's my father. He's my daddy. I'm his own dear child. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. A.W. Tozer. When talking about this relationship with God or giving good gifts, we got to get this straight before we know anything else. And this, this guy got it. He understood that. And we never leave this place what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Giving good gifts. This is the heart of the matter. Do you see that picture? Do you see that picture over there? This is the heart of the matter. How do you know God? Are you his dear child? 
and he is your loving, dear father. We've got to get this straight. This is what God wants you to experience every day in him. Our gifts to God matter. He desires that we give because he, of he wants, I'm sorry, because of what he wants for us, not from us. This is what he wants, to know him in this relationship. What comes into your mind when you think about giving good gifts in your relationship with God? In the classic donut story, the Holy Spirit gives us a powerful new insight and perspective. In grace, he would simply have you receive anew this relationship in Jesus as his dear child. What say you? Amen. Would you pray with me? What a gift, Lord. We, we always think about our lives as jumping through hoops or how good we have to be or uh, if we've reached where we need to be, especially our life of giving good gifts. And yet you give us this gift of seeing you as you wish to be seen. As our wonderful, dear father, our papa, our daddy. That in Jesus you gave us the greatest gift, your own dear son. So that we might know you as our, our father. We pray that every day your spirit might renew this in us. To know ourselves as your dear children. And every day, Lord, we might be excited to give you gifts as we bless those around us. And we pray in your most blessed name and all God's people say, Amen. Yes.